If you have attitude, skills, and plan, you can turn the tables on armed robbers. Thanks for joining us on today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Allentown, Pennsylvania in the United States. Today's video is brought to you by MagTech Ammunition, the exclusive supplier of range ammunition for all active self-protection training. So you can see the customer there looking like Kenny from South Park and the employee comes up and asks him what he would like. It went forward a little bit there just from the raw and when he asks the employee about something on the menu, he points something up and when the employee looks back at the menu, our bad guy draws a gun and points it at him and says, give me all the money out of the till. Now the employee is like, oh no, what am I going to do at this moment? When the other employee, who's actually his cousin, looks at him and is going to step in front and say, hey man, we don't have access to the safe or anything. We just have the till. So here, take the till and go. Guy is going to do exactly that. When the cousin is going to decide, if you go watch the, the interview that they did with him, that nah, man, I can't go out like that. And so he's going to run out and chase after him. Actually, both cousins do. Chase him down the block, call their manager who is coming from another store, and they chase this guy down and beat him over the head with pizza pans. And they're going to hold him until the cops show up. We can watch it from another angle. They catch up to this guy just before this. You can't see it, but the employee said he tossed the gun when they were chasing him down with the car. So when they see that, they beat the tar out of this guy. Cops did catch him. He's facing a whole host of charges, and that's where this one ends. Boy, I just love their attitude of self-protection. If you want to get better as a self-defender, one of the ways you can do this is find us on other social media platforms, Instagram and Facebook in particular. Just load up your app, search for Active Self-Protection, follow us there. We share stuff from all over the web, backs, behind the scenes stuff, uh, upcoming classes, all those things in those platforms. So come and join us there, would you? All right, lessons time. Okay, first, I want you to notice that bad guys use a ruse all the time and they will only announce their intentions at the last moment when they are at significant advantage. But you can get some pre-attack indicators. Again, this guy looks like Kenny from South Park, right? And yes, it's February. Yes, it's in Pennsylvania, so it could be cold. But the employee said, man, this guy looked weird the way that he had his stuff all done up and whatever. That could be a pre-attack indicator for you that you want to pay attention to so that you can put yourself in the best position to defend your life if you need to. Now then, you're going to notice that he does use a ruse here by pointing something else out. We call that a shark bump or a ruse that gives him that opportunity to say, is this guy an easy mark? And when he looks away, the guy has a gun pulled on him. Remember, as a self-defender, you will always be operating from an initiative deficit. Always. The bad guy always gets to set the time of the attack, which is why in an armed robbery we say that one of the keys to surviving an armed robbery is waiting your turn. If you try to draw a gun here with the guy's got a gun on you, it will be bad for you. Now, what he doesn't know right now is that the guy actually has a BB gun. That if you go read the news story, it wasn't a real firearm, but he doesn't know that. And unless you really know guns, you probably won't know that. So now you've got a guy who's pointing a gun at you. Always assume that the gun is real. Always assume that the gun is loaded. Always assume that he's willing to use it on you because those are your worst case scenarios. Instead here of trying something, you know, uh, uh, drastic, your best bet here is probably to comply. Even if you go and try to grab it across the counter, he has every advantage in that scenario and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Compliance and waiting your turn are probably your best bet in this particular instance. Now his cousin's going to step in here and say, okay, man, we can give you what we can give you, but just take it and go. And that is the right answer here. When the guy gets his stuff and he runs off, now then nobody is hurt and you're out a couple hundred bucks. I am going to say, like I said earlier, I love these guys' attitude. I love that they take care of one another. If you go watch the news story in the description, the employee said, these are my family and I'm not going to let somebody go out on my family like that. I get it. But putting yourself back out there when you don't know that it's a fake gun is a terrible idea. If you did know it was a fake gun and you want to chase a guy down, beat him up, take your money back, you know, or whatever, have a physical fight with him, I, you know, if your skills are high, okay. But not knowing that, I don't think that was a good plan. So good attitude, decent skill set, poor planning here. Let him go because when you chase him out there, you don't know if he's got bad guy, you know, other bad guys with him. You don't know what he's got going on. Now, when they call the manager here and the manager decides to chase him down, I want to think real quick about this because maybe the guy took two, 300 bucks out of the till. Now, what you're saying is you're willing to go have a fight with a guy who you think has a gun on him over a couple hundred bucks. If I said to you, hey man, uh, I'm going to take 200 bucks out of your checkbook, but uh, you can get it back from me if you're willing to have a gunfight with me and I am armed. Would you do that? Of course not, right? You call the cops and let them figure it out and say, no, I'm going to take you to court. 
So again, bad planning here, but good. I, I, I love their attitude of self-defense, but bad planning. Now, when he sees the fact that the guy has yeeted his gun off into the wild blue yonder, we didn't get to see that on camera, but he did say that in the interview. So once he sees that, okay, fine. Now you've got a physical conflict here and he takes appropriate physical action. Is it okay for him to defend his property with physical force? The answer is yes. It's okay to use physical force to defend property. And the fact that this guy has taken his property and done harm to him like that, okay, fine. Going to use necessary physical force to take your property back. I have no problem with that at all. That's totally legitimate. Using the tools that you have at your disposal, totally fine. Using a couple of them on there are great. I just want to say again, though, I think thinking that it was a firearm, that was a mistake to go after these guys. Great attitude, good skills, not a great plan. And you want to have all three attitude, skills, and plan in order to deal with this. But they were able to hold him in place and where the cops were able to get him. And so a lot of times we say success covers a multitude of sins, and really it does. But I wouldn't recommend chasing fleeing felons at all, guys. The reason for that, again, is because of the additional risk that you put yourself at from a safety perspective. But these guys did do a good job of complying in the moment. They did look for another opportunity when the guy threw his gun off. They did use appropriate force to get their property back. So we're going to give them a pass here. They covered their ass.